time to go out and really play against somebody else. So uh, we were, uh, it's, it's been a good preseason. I would say it's been a great one. I, I watched the video and, and um, we, we have some issues still making similar mistakes over and over again. We just got to keep cleaning it up and cleaning it up. But I do see some very promising plays and I think as, as I continue to coach, uh, I have to cherish those as much as I do the, the checklist things of things I want to get done and do better. So, uh, but we've had really good improvements in some of, with some of our guys. I hope you see some of those in, in, in November. And it, we don't have to wait till uh, January, February to see some of the improvements. Uh, and that will really be helpful for us if we can get out of this in this November month. I, I, I will say this, and, I, and this is a bold statement. If you look at who we're playing and when we're playing them and where we're playing them this year, I think this is the most challenging schedule we've had. If you look at the Big Ten, the way it's lined up, and and I know because I did the travel and look at these things, then you look at these preseason schedule. I think this is it, 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 it's certainly as tough as any that we've had. It might be the toughest of all our games. There may not. There's a few really marquee opponents. I mean, really marquee, but all the other games are just lined up where it is going to be. Um, we're going to have a heck of a season to have a heck of a year. All right, Kevin's going to start us off. Hey, Coach. Uh, more so about the season in general. Now that Derek is officially "quote unquote" leader on this team, is there a moment in the past three years that you're hoping kind of embodies what he brings to the team this year? Well, I think him and Zach are, are the leaders. I would say he's he's the leader. I would say we have some leaders. We all five of those uh, four-year players, those seniors. Um, uh, there's been big moments for him where he's you know I, I think it's a, a game in Nebraska as a freshman. At Michigan State as a freshman, where he he really played above his years, making big time plays. And then you know I, I think last year uh, when we had lost badly to Indiana and Michigan State at home, and we went to play a Minnesota team that had not won yet. Yet, and uh, he went at 18 or something in the first half. He's so capable of that. Not, not maybe, maybe 18 in the, every first half, but doing more. And he, that's that balance we're trying to get him to understand, be aggressive. And, and I think he's, he's nudged more to the area that I'm a, I'm a point guard that can shoot, not I'm a pass first point guard. And uh, we need that from him. Mark? John, you said this morning on the radio about the center position and how one guy has searched ahead. Who's yeah. searched ahead and what's kind of the... I think you'll see that tomorrow. Um, but both Mo has had some really, really good days. Uh, Mark's had some really good days. Uh, Mark's got more experience, better defender. Uh, Mo has, uh, has has skill level and his shooting ability is, is very good. Uh, I think it'll still work its way out. But I think they're both like, I wouldn't say they're neck and neck. But I think we'll know over the couple of, next couple of days who is a gamer, who can do things in games. Rebounding is an issue, as it always has been, but I think it's a, it's a really important difference maker between those two. Mark is a much better rebounder than Maurice is, and that's a, that is an issue, so I have that in consideration. Is there any way that could be a 50-50, or is it or you want to No, it's not. Yeah, I, I would think right now probably Mo has a little bit of a leadership there because of his, his just how well he's performed offensively. And, uh, but. Mark is, is more of the, uh, the defender and the tough, you know, blue-collar guy uh, inside that, that has to get the worst done. So it all depends on, as far as who's going to play the most, uh, will be depend what, probably what we need most in that game. Go ahead with Yeah, Coach, uh, I know at one point, I think it was on the huge show, it was mentioned that DJ was the best rebounder in practice for yeah. a couple weeks. Is that still the case? He was, he was, the he was, and we go back two years, and I said this to Maurice yesterday, that DJ didn't get a rebound ever in practice when he came. I mean, he was this 190-pound, you know, just flying all over the place. The like landing mechanics, jumping mechanics were all off, and uh, all of a sudden he's getting traffic rebounders. Now, don't confuse him with Dennis Rodman yet, but he will go in and stick his nose in there like you've never seen him do before, and we're encouraging that. So that's been a, that'll be a big change if we can rebound and defend out of that four position is going, to, is going to be huge for us. And has his switch to the four full time has that gone smoothly for him? Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, he's he's he's. We we think he'll play significant minutes at this point today. We think he'll play significant minutes in every game.
thing on DJ. He looked a lot bigger than he was last year. What's that done for him? I think they, they all, this, that's a great question. I think they all make this rise in, in becoming a better, uh, getting their body bigger. Then there's another step when they get bigger. Well, how do I use this new muscle? And I think that's what you saw from DJ last year. He's not a lot stronger than he was last year. He knows how to use it more, so it appears like he's more physical. And uh, so that's, uh, that's always good. There's this development process that the guys go through that hopefully that's, he, he, uh, guys like DJ, guys like Austin Davis, John Teske, show this ability to just become really athletic and really functional basketball players over a period of time. Right. Stick with DJ. Um, how much of this has been between missing his freshman year and, and last year not going well? How much of this has been building him up and believing that he can be a, a Big Ten basketball player? Yeah, he has. Um, I think it's been humbling for him coming in here. You know, the injury uh, early and just watching. Then last year, uh, we had very high hopes, and it was just it was still the game couldn't slow down enough for him. And I still think we'll have some moments this year, but I think we'll have far less of it. We'll see, we'll see much more production. But I, I, those, uh, that reality that hits most freshmen, I mean most, 80% of them, is that, wow, this is, this is really different. The guys are all bigger than me. They're stronger than me. They've been, they, and I can't do what I once could do in high school. Um, sometimes kids will see that and go south. Uh, DJ has gone north on it by just being really dil diligent and persevering. And uh, I'm rooting for him so hard just to have a really good, he's only a sophomore, really, you know, his, his academic year is, or his, or his athletic year is a sophomore. This could be really big if he continues to develop.